evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come on in. I want you to meet some new guests we just dug up. Now, uh, these cuties went astray because they had no murder to guide on. <laughs> this fearsome fellow, a carpenter by trade, got rid of his wife by using a drill. So, naturally, his spouse was bored still. <laughs> now, this murderous minx would never have been caught if it hadn't been for the ashes on the rug. Her husband's ashes. And finally, meet Tony, the village bellman, who turned out to be a dead ringer. Oh. You want to know why all these guests are hanging from the rafters? Well, that's because we like to keep our spirits up. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, Dead Heat, was written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan, and stars Mercedes McCambridge in the role of Clara, with Carl Swenson as Vincent. Well, folks, suppose you just curdle up anywhere. So here's a nice spot for someone, reasonable to just mark down from six to three feet. <laughs> Let's get to tonight's terrible tale. For over a week, the intense August heat lay on the Western Valley like a loathsome leech, drawing the lifeblood out of all growing things. The grass has withered to yellow. The soft, lush earth is hot. The streams have become dried, rocky beds. By day, the sun in a cloudless sky blisters the scorched land. The night brings no relief. Only the distant, melancholy cry of the coyote. And in the valley homes, the parched night burns the minds of the people with troubled thoughts. It'll never let up, Vincent. This awful heat. Hardly a breath of air. It's as if death has come to the valley to take us all. Everything here is dying. Clara, this heat is the worst possible thing for you. Now, I've told you before as a friend that you must leave. Now I am telling you as your doctor, you have got to leave here tonight. Leave? I wish I could. But I can't. Well, of course you can. Nothing to hold you here. You don't know, Vincent. Huh? You don't understand her power. She's holding me here. She won't let me leave. She? Who on earth are you talking about? My sister. Evelyn. Evelyn? You're not making sense. Evelyn has been dead for over a year. Yes. But still she holds me. She's buried in the hillside cemetery. The dead have no power over the living. Evelyn has. Now. What do you mean now? Don't you remember, Vincent? Last year when she died, it was like this. The air was as still and as hot. Death was around us then like it is now. Clara, stop talking like that. She's holding me here, Vincent, because she wants me to die. Clara. And I know what she's thinking. I killed her. She always thought I was the woman her husband, Stephen, was in love with. That's why it broke her heart. That's why she died. Now, Clara, Clara, listen to me. People don't die of a broken heart. I watched her during that terrible hot spell last year. I saw her fade. I saw her dry and shrivel. And I remember how she looked at me with those eyes every time Stephen came into the room. Clara, believe me, this is all your imagination. Oh. Now, the heat is warping your reason. That's why you've got to leave the valley immediately. You... Uh oh. Hello? Hello, Clara. Uh, who is this? Why, Clara, I'm surprised. Don't tell me you've forgotten your loving brother in law so soon. What do you want, Stephen? I just thought I'd let you know about it. I'm up here on the hillside at the cemetery. They called me about your sister's grave. But what? They say the heat is doing it. Doing what? Stephen, what are you talking about? Maybe you better come out here and see for yourself. It's Evelyn's grave. The earth is cracking, and the grave is opening up. <laughs> Clara, 
Watch my flashlight. The ground around here may be cracked, too. I've been to her grave so many times. Yet I'm almost afraid to go now. Well, you should have listened to me and waited in the car. I was afraid to be alone tonight. I told you it isn't good for you to use up your energy in this heat. You've got to... Oh, the doctor is right, Clara. Did I frighten you, Clara? Oh. Sorry. Oh, Stephen, it's only you. Come on, Clara. We're going up to the grave. You can't now. Half that side of the hill has fallen away. Oh. Here, Clara, look at this. You recognize it? Yes. Yes, that's Evelyn's diary. Where did you One get... of the workmen found it in the dirt beside Evelyn's casket. That's the diary she always kept under lock and key. The one that was placed in the coffin with it. That's right. So let me see that. Oh, Vincent, please. Don't open it. Why not? Because she always guarded it. They're her own private thoughts. She didn't want anybody to see them. Something in this diary may help her. Something may be written here that'll explain her death. Hmm. What is it, Vincent? What's the matter? It's strange. There's nothing written on any of the pages. Are you sure? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, wait. Here's something on the last page. Tonight, in the heat and darkness, I will get my revenge from the two people who made me wish myself dead. My husband, Stephen. She didn't understand me. And my sister, Clara. Oh, no. I have the strength. I will kill them both. She must have written that the day she died. She went to her grave thinking that Stephen and I... Wait a minute. This uh, wasn't written the day she died. Look the date. August 15th, 1949. The 15th? That's today. I don't understand it. How could she... It means just what she wrote, Clara. She's coming back to kill us. But she can't come back to life. Or can she? Of course she can. Evelyn can't do either one of you harm now. Not if she's really dead. But what if she's still alive? If she still had strength to write in the diary. What are you trying to say, Stephen? Maybe she isn't dead at all. And don't be a fool. I signed the death certificate, didn't I? I'm going up to her grave to make sure. The grave isn't there anymore. The side of the hill slipped away. But her casket was there. You said so before. Yes, the casket was there. Only Evelyn's body wasn't in it. Stephen, you're going into the house with us. What for? Well, why can't I wait for you here in the car? You can both wait out here. I don't mind going into the house with Oh! Clara, it's a minute. That light? In the house? What? Well, wasn't it on when you left? No. It wasn't on, was it, Vincent? Well, I honestly don't remember. I'm not going in there. Now, we both may have forgotten about the light in our excitement. Come on, Clara, we'll go in with you. But I'm sure that... I could swear I turned that light off when we left. Well, maybe you did. Maybe she turned it on again. Maybe Evelyn is in there waiting for us. Both of you are so frightened that you're not making a bit of sense. I told you, Evelyn is dead. She's dead for all time. Please, Vincent, don't. Don't open the doors, maybe. There. Now, do you see that no one is in there? All right, come on, now. Stephen and I will wait here while you get some things together. Clara? Clara, what is the matter with you? What are you staring at? Glove. Glove? What what are you... A woman's glove on the table there. Well, that's yours, isn't it? No. The the initial... Yes. It's Evelyn's glove. There, you you see, Vincent, I told you she's still alive. She's in here, looking for us, Stephen. She may still be here in the house someplace. We've got to get away from it. The the lights... She turned the lights off. She's come for us. Stop it, both of you. Stop. The power supply is running short in the valley. They're just conserving electricity. You're lying. You lied to us all along. You knew she wasn't dead. You brought us back here to be killed. But you're not, you're not running out. You're going to stay here and listen to me. Now, let go. Not until you listen to me. I said let go. Stephen, what did you do to him? I just hit him. Come on, we've got to get away from here before he comes to. We can't you can't fool. Do you want to die? All right, Stephen, I'll go with you. Now, where's your car? We're on back in the garage. Why? Because we can't use it. He'll trace us that way. But, but you might be wrong about Vincent. How can I be? You saw the glove. I never did trust him. Uh-huh. He and Evelyn were always so confidential with each other. Well, now, 
Just watch your step. It's dark back here. Wait. We can't stop now. What is it? Wait, wait. Someone is there. In the shadows alongside the house. Well, you can't see there. How do you know that? Can't you feel it? In the air? The heat right here is so oppressive. It's filled with... Stephen, look out! Oh, Stephen! Oh, oh, oh. oh, Stephen! Clara, what's happened? I don't know. I felt something pass me in the dark. Then I heard Stephen cry that. And then many fell to the ground. But you... Stephen is dead, Clara. He was stabbed in the heart. <laughs> That's the story, Sheriff Cooper. Dr. Branson here came out and found Stephen stabbed to death. My sister Evelyn killed him. Just as she said she would in her diary, she returned to life. Now, uh, look, Miss Fleming, I admit this heat's got us all on edge. The whole valley is going local, but I still don't believe in gold. But I tell you, she was here. You saw her? No, but I could feel her presence. When she was near, the air was hotter. It almost suffocated you. Oh, it's too hot to argue about ghosts. Well, then what about her diary? That note was in her handwriting. And that glove of hers we found on the table, what about that? Well, Clara, somebody else could have put that there. Hmm. Somebody else, Dr. Bronson? Why couldn't Miss Fleming's sister put it there herself? Why couldn't she have killed Stephen? Well, that is a strange way for a sheriff to talk. You know she's dead. Is she? Then what happened to the body? Well, obviously, when the earth cracked and the hill slid away, the body was thrown clear of the coffin and buried in the debris. I was thinking, Doctor, maybe the body was never in that coffin. What does he mean? I don't know, Clara. Doctor, you took care of Evelyn, didn't you? Yes, and I signed the death certificate. Now, look, Sheriff, I don't like the implications that you're making. Well, you don't have to like them. Evelyn died. I have a complete record of the case. I kept that record myself. That's what I mean. It's only your word. Oh, not entirely. There was a nurse on the case until the end. No, Vincent, no. Don't you remember the nurse was discharged the day before Evelyn died? The day before? Yes. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, Vincent, if you're hiding something, you've got to tell it to the sheriff now before it's too late. If she's alive... Don't be ridiculous, Clara. Now, you don't believe that your sister is alive, do you? What else can I believe? No. She's alive, all right. And, Doctor, you know where she is. Now, look here. She's committed one murder already, and you're going to tell me where she's hiding before she kills her sister. Hey, you stay away from that phone, Doctor, and I'll take it. Hello? Sheriff? Yeah? This is Deputy Williams. Well, what is it, Williams? He finally got something on that case. He found the sister, the one who was missing from that casket. Well, good work, and I was right. She is alive. Alive? No. Sheriff, yeah, she's dead as a doornail. What? Uh, the workmen found her body when they were digging out the landslide at the cemetery. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Fleming, but you've got to make this identification. Is that your sister's body? Yes. Yes, that's Evelyn. Well, okay. Can I take Clara home now, Sheriff? Yeah, sure, sure. And, Doctor, excuse me for jumping on you that way before. Huh? Yes, of course. I guess the heat got me more than I thought. You ever see such crazy weather? Come along, Clara. Oh, Vincent. What am I going to do now? Now? Well, Clara, there's nothing more to worry about. Are you sure that Evelyn's dead? She can't possibly hurt me. Oh, you still don't understand. Only her body is dead. She killed Stephen. She returned from the grave and killed him. No, Clara. You must believe that Evelyn could have had nothing to do with that. But Stephen is dead. Then whoever killed him is alive. And will kill me. Vincent, whose house is this? Why did you bring me here? Ah, don't worry, Clara. A friend of mine lives here, a woman named Lucille Lang. So we'll be perfectly safe here. But, Vincent, I don't want to go to this. Oh, Dr. Bronson, good evening. Miss Lang? Miss Lang. Lang. I know that name from somewhere. Come in, Miss Fleming. 
And your face. I know your face, too. Why, of course you do. We've met before. Where, where do I know you from? Well, you'll have plenty of time to talk about that later, Clara. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to stay here tonight. The Dr. Bronson ordered that you... Vincent, could... please. You must do as Miss Lang tells you. Oh, right? no. Please, Vincent, take me away from here. Come along, Miss Lang. Let go of me. You mustn't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Oh. I'll do as I want, Clara. <laughs> Miss Lang will take the best care of you. Uh, all right. It's all right. Now, you get a good night's sleep. Yes. I'll be around to pick you up in the morning. Yes. Good night. Good night. Oh. Now, sit down right there, Miss Lenny. Huh? That's it. Mm. You know, the more you move around, the worse you feel the heat. Yes. So they say. See how much calmer you are already? Mm. You're not afraid of me anymore now, are you, Miss Lenny? I guess not. I'm glad. I can't be of much help if my patient is frightened of me. Patient? Oh, I suppose you're not really a patient in the strictest sense after all. No, I know. No, I remember. You're a nurse. You're the nurse. Why, yes. I'm the nurse who took care of your sister. It was a shame to see such a fine young woman die. I felt terribly when I heard about it. Oh, you awful thing! How dare you even mention my sister? I don't understand. You know why she died. You know more about it than anybody else. Well, Miss Fleming, you're just exciting yourself on this. Don't come near me. But I only want to help. Don't touch me. Get away. Oh. What is it, Miss Fleming? A glove. A rather glove. Glove? They're on the table. You had them both. You did it. You killed Stephen. That proved it. Better go to bed. You're much too agitated. You're not going to kill me. I'm getting away from you. I'm not going to die. Wait. Let go, please. I don't want to die. Please let me go. No. You're coming back to the house with me. I'm going to take care of you just as Dr. Bronson ordered. Oh, please, I'll pay you anything. Only let Miss Lang. What is it? What's wrong? It's here again. What? It's here in the dark around me. I can feel it. Coming closer, closer. Oh, save me, Miss Lang. Save me before it's too late. Miss Lang, what's the matter? Miss Lang! Clara! Clara, what's happening? Vincent, what are you doing here? I thought you... Well, I was worried about you, Clara. I just came back to make sure that everything was all right. What happened? Why are you calling Miss Lang? Miss Lang is dead, Vincent, on the ground there. Look. What? I never dreamt that she was in danger. She wasn't. Don't you see this? Huh? She was. She wasn't meant to be killed. It's so dark out here. She was mistaken for me. The murderer meant to kill me. What's taking the police so long? The sheriff should have been here by this time. Well, don't worry. He'll be here soon enough. But you said you called him 20 minutes ago. I did. He wasn't in... I left a message for him. Vincent? Mm hmm? You did call the sheriff, didn't you? Clara, what is the matter with you? You heard me speaking on the phone, didn't you? No. I was in the other room. Well, you sound as if you don't trust me. I don't know whom to trust anymore. Oh, Clara. Oh, Vincent, forgive me. I don't know what, what I'm saying. But I'd feel better if the sheriff were here. Well, you've no reason to be afraid. I'm here. Yes, Vincent. You're here. You're afraid of me. Yes. Well, why? Why would I want to hunt you? Because you think I know who killed Stephen and uh, Miss Lang. Well, don't you? No, I'm not sure. I didn't see anybody but you. And naturally, that is what you will tell the police. Vincent, I want to believe you. Please, tell me. You didn't kill them. Of course I didn't. Well, then why don't you let me call the police? All right, Clara. Just to prove a point to you, we'll drive over to the sheriff's office. Come on. No. You go. I'll wait here for you. I wouldn't leave you alone now. Not for all the world. After all, there's a murderer loose. All right, I'll go with you. Bring the car around to the front and I'll be ready. Are you sure you won't try to run away? No. Why should I? Well, just don't try it. Because there's no place to go. I'll be back in a moment. Uh. Hello? Hello, operator? Operator? Number, please. Oh, operator, quick. Get me to the sheriff's office, please. Hurry. One moment. Hurry. Hurry. Sheriff Cooper speaking. Yes, 
Sheriff, this is Clara Fleming. Yes, Miss Fleming. Did Dr. Bronson call your office? Dr. Bronson? Why, no. I knew he was lying. Say, what Sheriff, are you... Sheriff, listen to me. I have only a minute left. There's been another murder. What? And Dr. Bronson is the one who's responsible for both of them. You've got to get here before he kills me, too. Now, where are you calling from? Uh, Sheriff, he's outside the house. Where are you? At a Miss Lang's house at the northern end of the valley, just a few yards off Trumbull Road. Trumbull Road? Clara, what's happened? Oh, dear. I'm coming, Vincent. Sheriff, please hurry up. Uh, what's wrong, Miss Fleming? The lights. They've been turned off. He... Vincent! Don't! Don't come in here! Uh, uh, Miss Fleming! Miss Fleming! What are you doing in the dark, Clara? Who are you talking to on the phone? Clara, why didn't you answer me? Oh, Vincent! Please let go of me! Let go of my arm! I'll let go, Clara, when you drop that knife. What? Now drop it. Drop it, I said. <laughs> oh, there, that's better. You would have killed me, too. Just like you killed Stephen and Miss Lang. Clara, you're a murderer. Oh, no! No, it wasn't me. It was Evelyn. She came to me. I could feel her near me in this heat. She was beside me all the time. She made me do it. But she was my sister. I had to help her. You called Sheriff Cooper, so all the blame would be put on me before you stabbed me, too. No, I, I wouldn't have gone through with it, Vincent. I could never kill you. Never. But Stephen, Stephen was evil. And that Lang woman. She's the one who took Stephen away from Evelyn. She's the one who broke up their marriage. They took my sister's life. It was only fair that theirs be taken. I suspected you in a way, Claire. That's why I took you here to Miss Lang's house. You hid your sister's body and you wrote those words in her diary. I only copied what my sister said in hers. One year ago tonight. On a night like this... Oh, hot and evil and sad. Sit down, Clara. We'll wait for the sheriff. You, sir. It's raining. Yes. Evelyn. She's gone from me. She just left. She's gone back to her grave. The spell of the heat is over, Clara. It's all over now. Well, Clara will finally join her sister in that cemetery, and then they'll be two made. Say, if you happen to live in that valley and you hear that grave slid down the hill again, don't let it bother you. Because slips don't count. Oh, yes, there's a moral to tonight's torrid topic. It's from the overheated pen of that desert rat philosopher, J. Fowlweather Friend. Says Mr. Friend, people who live in grass hothouses shouldn't throw bones. <laughs> Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.